um, a technique called nasoalveolar molding, where we're able to shape the lip and the nose uh, to improve the position of the lip and the nose before we get to the operating room. <clears throat> and that does a lot for us. That allows us to get a better lip repair, get a better nose repair, but it also allows us to repair the gums where the teeth will ultimately come in. The um, technique uh, in the palate uh, involves two muscle groups. Uh, the first muscle is the muscle that is moving my palate as I speak to you right now. Uh, we repair that muscle so that the child has a better ability to speak and about 97.5% of our children can speak normally without any additional surgery. Uh, the second muscle in our palate opens our, our middle ear tube so when you are taking off on an airplane or when you are landing on an airplane, you have that uh, sensation in your ears where the ears pop. That is the second muscle in your palate opening the ear tube. In children with a cleft, that muscle doesn't work right, uh, but we're able to repair that in our cleft uh, technique so that the children have better ear function. In the years to come, things that we need to do better um, we need to um, work on reducing the scar uh, and whether that comes through gene therapy uh, or other topical uh, treatments. Uh, we need to improve the appearance uh, of the scar. Secondly, when we do palate surgery or alveolar surgery, right now <clears throat> in our center, 60% of our children will have enough bone in their gums, uh, but 40% still won't. In other centers that don't use our technique, all of their children have to go on to a bone graft when they're seven years of age. 40% of our children do.